Hello and welcome to lesson 3 of our module about Tocharian syntax. In this final video about uh, syntax of Tocharian, you will get an overview of clause and sentence structure. This part of the course requires also some basic knowledge about the morphological categories of Tocharian, which are found in a previous lesson. So, we'll start by looking at clause syntax. As I said earlier in this lecture, the word order in phrases as well as uh, the constituent order of sentences and clauses into Tocharian is free. By free, I mean that it can be heavily changed and reorganized in contrast to the canonical or normal word order. And this occurs most frequently in metrical texts but it does also occur in prose text. The canonical order in Tocharian is mainly left branching, it's SOV, both in main as well as in subordinate clauses, and it has noun at position, adjective noun, and uh, adverb uh, and verb. However, verb initial position is normal in questions. And in Tokian A, it's preceded by a particle te. And it's also found in formulas in dramatic literature, like Tokian A, char punch, they all went out uh, from the stage. Or like in Buddha Stotra texts, such as uh, in Tokian B, winna some chi, blah blah blah, pundarikem, I honor you, the lotus flower. So let's look at non canonical word order. In metrical passage, uh, passages, and also occasionally in prose, word order patterns are frequently reversed. So we have SVO, we have OVS, and VOS. Adjective noun is also frequently reversed in metrical passages, where we may find a separation of adjective noun, as well as even circumposition, adjective, noun, adjective. Initial position of the verb is used to mark the importance of an event or to focus it. Uh, Jussive and imperative verbs are normally in initial position. In metrical passages, subordinating particles can be clause final. And we have an example here. Uh, it says, of the death, you go a being if. So it's, it's a subordinate clause, but the subordinate in particle, if a being goes into the power of death, is at the end here. It's uh, from Punyavanta Jataka, like the story that we have uh, seen before about the mechanical doll. So let's move over to uh, negation. And uh, the negation particle is a ma, mar, mar, or ma, and b, ma. In simple and prohibitive clauses, the negation is combined with a present form. Uh, however, the negation particle can be uh, combined with the optative, to mark a uh, deontic modality, with the subjunctive, to mark neutral and epistemic modality, with indicative, to mark neutral and exclamative modality and uh, without a verb uh, to mark exclamative. So let's move over to modality. The modal system consists of the indicative, the subjunctive, the optative and the imperative. Subjunctive and optative are more frequently used in subordinate than in main clauses. In main clauses, the subjunctive denotes deontic or obligative modality, whereas the optative denotes epistemic or volative and speculative modality. So we see here uh, in this example, I would like to get permission, I would like to wash Buddha with my own hand. So you see, kelpimar optative and irashimar is optative. So it's something that the 
it's again from the Punyavataka or the Burada Jyotijataka, and the person wants to, to wash, to get permission to wash the Buddha, and he's using the optative. We will look at the speech acts. The interrogative is uh, marked by B, kuse and A, kus, and it's also uh, the relative uh, particle, the relative pronoun, so they are the same. can be also used for interrogative. Imperative is marked by an imperative, which is the strongest form for commands. And it's normally, but not exclusively, found in second singular or plural, or dual. Jessives are marked by subjunctive, uh, to mark obligative, and optative, uh, to mark volative, for more weak requests. The weakest type of request is marked by a verbal noun and an infinitive. And this is very frequent in uh, medical texts, to describe recipes, like uh, cooking recipes. So, we have here an example from a medicine text, and it says, this should be cooked, and the oil should be left over. So, they say, and, pekshala means cook this, and leave out the oil. So this is like how recipes are uh, given in Tokarian. Unfortunately, there is uh, very little or no research done on clausal coordination in Tokarian. And this means that we at the current stage are not able to give an overview uh, of the rules for combining clauses and which types of aspects or modalities that occur in the various types of clause combinations. However, we know something about the clause combining particles and uh, we'll look at them now. So, first we have uh, the conjunctive particle spe, scam, uh, y, and yo, which mean they all mean and. And then we have the disjunctive, ra, or a p, p, which means even and also. And the Korean b, what, what no, or a, pat, pat no, which means uh, or. And uh, these two, uh, what and pat, they are normally in Wackenagel position. And then finally we have the adversative, which is b, no, and a, no. Uh, but and then, and is also normally uh, in the Wackenagel position. This uh, slide here is about non-finite predication. There are several non-finite uh, constructions that uh, may serve as predicates in a sentence. So, the infinitives uh, are not bound by tense, modality, or aspect. And infinitives can be used in subordinate clauses when the subject of the sub and the superordinate clauses uh, refer to the same uh, person or the same agent. And uh, infinitive can be inflected uh, as nouns with secondary case affixes and infinitives can serve as predicates. Uh, then we have the middle passive participles. They are uninflected and they represent uh, an event which is parallel or simultaneous with the predicate. So it represents um, a type of construction that corresponds to converbs uh, in other languages. The preterite participle can be used with or without a copula, also in the value of a, a predicate. And the gerunds or gerundives, and we have two, as you hopefully have seen in the uh, other lesson, 
uh, about the morphology. One codes necessity and the other codes possibility. And they can be used in periphrastic constructions also to, call, to code the predicate. Now let's move over to relative clauses. There is a connection into carrying between interrogatives and relatives, like I said before, because they use the same form, the same pronoun. So the relative pronoun is in nominative kuse, in tokarian b, in tokarian a kusne. In oblique, it's tokarian b kuche, in tokarian a kuchne. And the genitive is kete and kine. The correlative is uh, normally uh, a personal uh, pronoun, and uh, we see that here in this exam example, whoever uh, here, so we have kuprene, if he is reborn, uh, whoever commits an evil deed, and he to hell he goes. So you see here that the correlative um, is a demonstrative pronoun. And this is from the Gava Sutra. Uh, let's have a look at the subordinating particles of Tokarian. First, we have uh, the temporal. In uh, temporal or time clauses, we have a anta ne b ente, which means when, and then we have location where anta and b ente, cause, like because of blah blah blah, it's kuchne and kuche, and the purpose in purpose clauses, it's a memtne mekte in order to and so forth. Condition, kuprene and b kvre kvre if. And you remember we had that in, in, in an example before in the clause final position. It's very often in clause final position. And um, here we have an example of that. So it says, if I give uh, you to this specific one king, there's you. So you see, it's not really clause final because you belongs to this clause here. Um, enemies to me be the other ones, of the other ones. So if I give you to one king, the others will become my enemies. So this is the other clause here. And this is from the Sharanta Jataka. It's a very nice example. So, finally, a few words have to be said about translation syntax and the independence of the Tokarian language in relation to, San to Sanskrit. Tokarian texts are normally translated from, uh, from Sanskrit. However, the syntax and typology of Tokarian is fundamentally different from Sanskrit. Uh, for instance, uh, Tokarian does not like compounding. So uh, translations are normally or typically very, very different. And it means also that translation syntax is rare. But there are formalized translations. And the most uh, frequently quoted example is that the Sanskrit absolutive is translated by a verbal noun in the ablative into Tokarian. However, we have phraseology and formalized syntax, which is represented by a Sanskrit construction in the Sanskrit originals, but it's formalized within Tokarian. And in particular, we have combinations of verbs and verbal particles, uh, verbs and adverbs, verbs and nouns, and uh, the entire phrase has a specific and fixed meaning. And this is very frequent in texts. So 
We will now look again at the text that we have looked at before, the Punjavanta Jataka and the story of the mechanical doll. But we'll continue uh, from where we were uh, before and we will look at the sentence structure and clause and sentence structure specifically. So, here we have first, uh, it starts with as if uh, ashamed. She a little look, she looks down a little as if she was uh, ashamed. And then there is a word that we don't know the meaning of, shari liak, she looked something. And again it says as if she is uh, ashamed or uh, it's just another word that means that she is uh, blushing or ashamed. And not speak, uh, and not be able she did it, she couldn't speak uh, any speech ma plached krankes and then it says and not laugh she didn't laugh and with love like now she stretched out her arm and uh, you see here you have uh, she stretched out her arm and then doing that uh, very well. It's an emphatic particle that means that she did it very well. And it continues from all the body Ponsom captionus from all the body here the heat oblique singular she may disappear. So here we have a very nice causative form of uh, disappear. So she may disappear the heat from all the body uh, of the painter. So actually this belongs to the previous sentence here. Uh, and then we have this form tmush. And tmush is important because it marks that this is a new sentence. Tmush thereupon this painter out of ignorance this wooden girl for a real uh, of a girl image and uh, managing or managed uh, for himself emphatic particle to believe so he thinks to himself he so we have he thinks to himself so we have precisely this. So thereupon, this painter out of ignorance here, this wooden mechanical girl for a real one, the image of thinking to himself, he thinks. Now there comes what he says and he says, oh what beauty, oh what of a woman uh, with shyness and with uh, shyness. So this is again uh, what he says. This was the last video of the module about Tocharian. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you found Tocharian to be a fascinating language. And we also hope uh, that Hannes and I have encouraged you to uh, study this fascinating language with all its complex and nice grammar.